It's 3.45 a.m. on a Saturday, technically. Um, You know, Friday night leads into Saturday. And I can't believe I'm recording a video, but I am. Can't sleep. I have watched Washington's highlights over Oregon for, you know, about the 15th or 20th time. And, you know, I need to take a little bit of break. And what a perfect time to talk about Taylor Sassetto because Seattle boy who loves the Huskies. Tons of tweets talking about how excited he is about Washington winning the Pac-12 championship. I know you're watching this video on like a Tuesday or Wednesday, so um, you don't care about the game anymore. Maybe. I'll never stop caring about the game. That was amazing. But we're here to talk about Taylor Sassetto, and I figured what a perfect time to do it 3 46 a.m before we get into all of it let's thank the good people of simply seattle because they simply have the very best in seattle sports gear you can find amazing hats like this one right here go huskies but great stuff for the seahawks the mariners the huskies the kraken the supersonics the cougars storm sounders you can find it all at simply seattle and then you can save 15 percent off your order by entering code mollywop 15 m-o-l-l-y WHOP15 automatically takes 15% off checkout. They're awesome. I can't say enough good things about them. I'm legally required to do so. I'm just kidding. But yeah, simplyseattle.com. There is a link and a code thingy in the description. Code thingy, the official term. So Taylor Sassetto was claimed off waivers at the very end of January last year from the New York Mets. And I think we all didn't pay a whole heck of a lot of attention to it. What was there to pay attention to? There's no way we were expecting Taylor Sussetto to be anything more than an up and down arm at very most. But he was a lot more than that. He ended up making 52 appearances for your Seattle Mariners. A 3.59 ERA, 47 and two thirds innings over those 52 appearances. 17 games finished, by the way. So we got a chance to. Only got one save, but got a chance to finish off quite a few games. Uh, 43 to 23 strikeout to walk ratio, and he only allowed two homers. And that kind of leads perfectly into what the strength of Taylor Sassetta was, at least in 2022 or 2023, I should say. It's 3.48 in the morning. Leave me alone. Um, He does not give up hard contact. It was one of the most difficult hitters to square up, and... You know, I think a lot of that has to do not with necessarily great stuff, but tons and tons of deception. Gave up hard hit contact on only 31.9% of plate appearances. That's elite. Ground ball percentage of 58.5, also elite. Chase rate of 33.3, elite. Average exit velocity, 85.9, elite. There's a lot to like about that. And it's not because this guy has a big old fastball. Not that you can, well, I guess you kind of measure the size of a fastball a little bit. 92.3 miles per hour on his fastball, well below average. But he has a very good changeup and a very good slider and a curveball that can keep hitters honest as well. And he used those pitches 58 58% of the time. Fastball 42% of the time. He relies on deception and deception and also deception. He's also among the league leaders in extension. Well, league leaders are a little too strong. 78th percentile. But the ball gets on hitters quickly, and it's hard to pick up. I think what's interesting, too, about Sassetto is I think he had a little bit of bad luck. His whiff percentage was 29.6. That's a very solid number, 75th percentile. But his strikeout rate was only 28 20.8. That's not great. 32nd percentile. Which tells you that he was getting swings and misses, but not to end at bats. Now, do hitters change their profile with two strikes? Sure. Is it completely just bad luck? I don't think so. But you would think those two numbers would have a little bit higher of correlation. And it's why I do think Sassetto is capable of missing bats. Well, we know he's capable of missing bats. I think he's capable of more strikeouts going forward. Having said that, 
The thing that concerns me about Saucedo is not an elite strike thrower, not even close. He ended up walking 11.1% of the hitters. That's bad. That's really bad. And that can't happen. You can get away with that when you have elite stuff and you're constantly getting one to two strikeouts an inning and leaving those base runners going. Hello, Matt Brash. It's much harder when, even though I'm saying he can get more strikeouts, we are not talking about anywhere close to an elite bat misser. So he has to throw more strikes. And if he can, he can be really effective. And he was for the most part. Now, he did slow down in the second half. I'm going to pull up the ERA for both, and I'm going to try to hit the pause button at the right time this time. I've cut myself off in every single video. Hopefully, I didn't do it this time, but we'll see. Um, In the first half, he made 25 appearances. And look, the first half is longer technically than the second half of the year. That's We we call it the all-star break, but let's be honest, the the all-star break is not at the halfway point. It's usually about 10 to 15 games over that. Anyway, he made 25 appearances in the first half and 27 appearances in the second half. In the first half, he had a 2.74 ERA with a 23 to 12 strikeout to walk ratio. In the second half of the season, he made 27 appearances, 24 and two-thirds innings, a 20 to 11 strikeout to walk ratio. Not that different, but here's the difference. First half ERA of 2.74, second half ERA 4.38. Some of that a little misleading. There were a couple of clunkers that he was left in to kind of wear it, unfortunately. But I think anybody who watched knows that he was more effective in the first half than the second half. Um on base percentage for hitters in the second half of the season was 3.5 or 3.5, 0.35, 35%. 3.53 in the morning. Leave me alone. Uh, and then the other thing that's interesting about Sassetto, and I don't know what this says, honestly. Puma Games, an ERA at T Mobile Park of 1.09. An ERA away from T-Mobile Park of 6.25. And he only had an inning and two-thirds more at home. Kind of weird. Again, had to wear some. Definitely had to wear some. But it is interesting that he was so much more effective at home. Look, T-Mobile is still much more a pitcher's park than a hitter's park. And... I think Sassetto took advantage of that. And it does make some sense that he would be better away, or excuse me, at home, pitching in front of your your friendly confines, your favorite baseball team. But also, you know, less uh, less of a risk of the ball going over the park. Now, he allowed all of two homers, like I said. He, he did a darn good job of keeping the ball in the park. But you know what I'm saying. It's it's easier to pitch in T-Mobile Park than a lot of places. Uh, looking at it, too, here, the batting average on balls in play. At home, it was 333, away 269. So, again, kind of weird. Kind of weird. Long story short. I like Taylor Sassetto. I like the person a lot. I like the pitcher too and think he can be better in 2024 than he was in 2023. But there's no denying as well that there is a thin margin of error because of the fact that this guy does not have elite stuff and because this guy is not a strike throwing machine. No, this could crash. This absolutely could crash. It can be better, but there's a little more volatility here than you might think from a 30-year-old left-hander. Taylor Sassetto, you excited for him next year? Think he's a lock to make the bullpen? Think he'll be given every opportunity to be sure, assuming he's still here. Not sure if he's a lock, but I think it's pretty darn likely. Speaking of liking, 
If you could please hit like on this video, I'd really appreciate it. If you could tell your friends or if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate having you. Um, your support means an awful lot. It's 3.56 in the morning and I'm waxing nostalgic about how much I appreciate you guys and how excited I am about the Huskies, by the way. Thanks, everybody. You know what? I'm going to do it. Go dogs.